because it tends to get a bit slower and lower and maybe turns more as the game goes on. Um, but the toss is incidental, it's how you play that counts and, and we run up to scratch. And it's even... England's cricketers are finishing the year somewhat beleaguered in Australia and they began the year in a similar situation in the West Indies. The form of one man though was going to dominate both the Caribbean winter and the county championship summer and he wasn't English. England captain Michael Atherton had plenty to contemplate as his team were beaten in the West Indies but he could only admire the feat of Brian Lara in the final test. Gary Sobers' record test score of 365 finally fell to Lara. Sobers looked on as Lara pulled Chris Lewis for the four that rewrote the record book after 36 years. I feel great, I'm really happy. Um, um, it's a special moment for me, it's the best day of my life and it's nice to have Sir Gary here to see. Amid jubilant scenes, Lara took his score to 375 and received the tributes of his teammates. There was barely time for a triumphant homecoming in Trinidad before Lara was arriving in Birmingham for an amazing start to his season with Warwickshire. Lara's prolific run soared to a second record-breaking performance. Against Durham, he should have gone for 18. And Chris Scott could never have realized how expensive his miss would be. Two days later, Lara took his total past 400, and finally, with 72 boundaries, and from only 427 balls, he smashed John Morris for four to reach 501, the highest innings ever played in first-class cricket. For the summer, Ray Illingworth was England's new chairman of selectors, and his captain had something to smile about, a serious victory over New Zealand. Atherton led the way with two centuries, while former captain Graham Gooch was in top form at Trent Bridge. The shot and a nice statistic for Graham Gooch, his second double century in Test match cricket. Phil De Freitas' nine wickets helped England to victory in the first test. And despite New Zealand's good effort at Lords, that was enough to give Atherton his first series victory as captain. South Africa awaited. South Africa celebrated their first test in England for 29 years by bowling England out for 99 on the fourth day for their first win at Lord since 1935. It is over and that is an historic victory for South Africa. But South Africa's success was overshadowed by the controversy involving the England captain, the dirt in his pocket and the ball. I did not alter the condition of the ball at all. The dirt was there solely to keep my sweat on my fingers and my hands off the ball. Illingworth fined Atherton £2,000 for misleading match referee Peter Burge, but resisted press calls to take the captaincy from him. Atherton responded with 99 in the second test, but then picked up another £1,250 fine for this adjudged show of dissent in the third test. But at the Oval, England did hit back in style to square the series. Joey Benjamin excelled on his debut, but the hero is Devon Malcolm on his return to the team. feeling you know you know getting the next getting the wickets and you know you just keep going so it was a magnificent feeling malcolm only the fourth england bowler to take nine wickets in the test innings the man of the match but as england flew into brisbane to start the ashes series devon was ruled out with chicken pox england too looked sickly as michael stater hit a superb 176 his best in test cricket craig mcdermott confounded the critics with six wickets as england was shot out for 167 and that man, Shane Warne, ended their resistance with eight wickets in the second innings. 
Warwickshire and Brian Lara ended their amazing season with three trophies. It's got to be it's got to be they may never win the Eurovision Song Contest, but only their defeat in the NatWest final foiled the Grand Slam, an historic achievement by Dermot Reeves' team and the man of the year, Brian Lara. It's got to be An outstanding record-breaking year for Brian Lara, which makes him clear winner of the Overseas Personality of the Year Award. Brian is in Chandigarh with the West Indies, midway through the final test. There's no one more appropriate to make the award than Sir Gary Sobers. Brian Lara, due to your magnificent series against England in the West Indies this year, in which in the last test match in Antigua, You've set that record of 375, broken my own record of 365, and then going on to England and making 501 in a first-class innings against Durham, your county mate, Anderson Cummins. It gives me great pleasure on the behalf of the BBC to present to you as overseas, first, as overseas Sports Personality of the Year this wonderful trophy. Congratulations. I'd like to thank BBC Television for giving me such an award. It's another momentous time in, in my life. Looking back at the sports personalities that have won this award over the years, they have all gone on to become great sportsmen and also role models in their life. This is something that I would like to achieve at the end of my sporting days. I'd like to thank the members of the West Indies cricket team, also the members of Warwickshire, for making this such a successful year for me. I'd like to also thank my mom and my family for sticking with me during good and bad times. And last but not least, and I think most important, I'd like to thank the Lord for making me the person I am today. Thanks a lot. Brian Lara, Overseas Personality of the Year. Well, also overseas and joining us live from Sydney, is the England captain, Mike Atherton. Mike, welcome. And uh, the good news, first of all, it's early morning in Australia. You've just got up. And it doesn't look as if you've got chicken pox. Can you, uh, <laughs> can you confirm that? <laughs> I can confirm that. Joey Benjamin's struggling, though. Uh, we need you. You were in good form yesterday. But the bad news, those two results against the Australian Academy, the so-called youngsters um, in the two one-day games, uh, what's gone wrong? Well, we're a bit short of confidence. We're not playing too well at the moment. But equally, having said that, there's only two internationals gone. Uh, there's plenty more international cricket left in the Australian summer, and there's time to turn things around yet. How have the results been greeted by the Australian press? Are they, are they being gentle with you? No, the Australian press are never gentle. It's not a good place to come and lose, that's for sure. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough time and a tough position to be captain. Uh, are you still enjoying it after all the experiences of the summer as well? Very much so. It's been a, a summer of some highs and lows, um, but you always feel a little bit more responsible as captain, uh, and naturally I'm hoping that the fortunes of the side uh, see an upturn this summer. Well, the plan is working. The last couple of results have lulled them into a false sense of security. What can you promise us for the second test? Well, the second test starts Christmas Eve, so that's coming up in just under a fortnight. Um, we've just got to fight back. You've got to go show a bit of character when things don't go well. Um, that happens in this game, but it's how you fight back that counts. We wish you the best. Thank you for joining us. It's very early down there. Mike Atherton, the England captain in Australia. Thank you.